Welcome to the drunk tank. Yeah, it's a drunk tank. Yeah, it's a drunk tank. Drunk tank. Yeah, yeah, it's the worst song ever. A, <laughs> hey everyone, welcome to the drunk tank. That was a lot of yes. Yeah. Hey, uh, speaking of drunk tank songs, we had a visit from a drunk tank singer the other day. Should we yeah, talk about that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, we had uh, the boy Wonder, who I think, think did our theme song for what, like drunk tank number twenty six or so. You called him Doctor Pussy Magnet. Yeah, he did the good song. <laughs> it's the the drunk tank where we had Dan sit in with us. He's actually an, a real mu- an honest to god musician. Yeah, he stopped by the office. He uh, he emailed you know, we to see if it was okay and we set up a time for him to come in and he was a real nice guy yeah, yeah. he was he went to lunch with him and everything he had a real guitar with him too yeah I was hoping he wasn't going to bust that out I was a little nervous <laughs> that's not, but uh I don't want to be folked <laughs> but uh you think he even he even has a show coming up or something and we told him we'd plug it yeah do you remember was, what that was, it was it's like head, February 28th February 28th at Headhunters here in Austin Headhunters okay which where is, where is Hannah? That's at Seventh and Red River. Yeah, it used to used to be something else. I used to we used to hang out there a lot. That's yeah, good. back in the day, it was something. What was it called? It was called Ocean's Thirteen. That's right, that's or Ocean's what, Eleven. That's right, that's what it was called. And uh, Gus and I hung out there so much that uh, we had a table. We hung out there so much. You were in love with the waitress, <laughs> yeah, China. Or they, they would. Uh, we, we used to go there so much that she would kick people out of our table. That's true. We would go there seven days a week. Like it would, it, like it would be packed. Like on Saturday night, and we'd show up. She'd be like, "Oh, hey guys, hold on a second. She'd be like, <laughs> "She'd go over to the table, and be like, you guys get the fuck out." She would. She'd be like, "I'm sorry, this table's reserved." I guess like, she no, didn't see not. the sign, and, and she put, put a sign down. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome, man. Those were the days. That's service. Man, they had... got shut down by the FBI, didn't no, they? No, they got shut down by TABC, TABC. which is uh, like the Gestapo FBI. Here yeah. in TABC is like the the alcohol regulatory. Uh, commission here in Texas. Yeah, what were they, they doing? They came in and raided the place while it was open one night. That place, if you were a regular, you could stay and drink after 2 a.m. Ah, uh, okay. And that's, sometimes, the way that's the way it should be. And sometimes yeah. other stuff happened. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, where the what, court, that's where the courts did decide. What, yeah. what kind of other stuff? <laughs> like ritual non, <laughs> Non-podcast stuff. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, long story short, we don't go there anymore. <laughs> anyway, it's Headhunters now. They have yeah, live music now. And yeah. the Boy that, Wonder will be playing. That's Caddy Corner to Stubbs, right? Yeah. Kind okay. of, yeah. You know, it's funny. Isn't that sort of anyone that opens in that location winds up closing at six months later? Am I wrong about that? No, the stuff there has been there a while. Like, the red-eyed flies there. Uh, room 710 actually did just close. You know, but they were there for, like, seven years. Yeah. Wow. But there, there is that building, the Mohawk building, that was a new club, like, every year for the longest time. And then Mohawks held on to it for a while. I think they've been there five years or so. Yeah. It's like, but, who's, who's the guy? It's, it's like the same thing downtown from, like, across from Hooters or whatever. That one plot of land that just, like, goes from one thing to the other. It's like, who? That, oh, the one that was, like, a Bennigan's and now it's some other there, Irish there, place? There, there are definitely cursed locations in Austin. Like Wan Fu Tu. <laughs> the, the Wan Fu Tu, which used to be an ice cream place. There's which that, used to be a surfboard shop. Then there's also... It, it's basically, if you don't have, like, that left turn access or whatever, yeah. it's over. It's over. There's, there, al- there's, there's also the place that used to be the Realm. Then it was... Uh, the other place, and then it was La Bear. Oh yeah, it was called. It was Sidekicks. And yeah, it Sidekicks. Was, uh, exactly the place. I'm talking way about. back yeah. in like '93, <laughs> I used to go there, and it was called Sharkies. I think Sharkies. That's right. Yeah. Man, I forgot about that. Yeah, that was back in the early '90s. That's shit. An, that's amazing. I'm sure memory. everyone who lives who does not live in Austin finds this part of the podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fucking fascinating. fascinating. You know what else? I, 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 fuck it, I'm gonna keep it rolling. It was Steamboat for a while. Was it? Yeah, Steamboat closed down on Congress. It was like an Austin institution. Yeah, I, I never went there. The place was boring. Oh, shit. You're right. It was right. kind of lame. And uh, anyway, it opened up. After it closed down, it opened up in that building. And then I remember that because they took the entire side of the two-story building and they put the calendar. Like, they drew a calendar on it. And every day they would, like, was that every month like, they would paint the shit that was going on. Was that like 98? Yeah, that was like 98, 99. No, it would have been like 2000. This, this is... This is why this is applicable to people outside of Austin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try and say applicable again. <laughs> every, every, applicable. every city, there's that place where it's like there's a business that doesn't make it past six months. It just goes from one business to the other. Business. It's the yeah. building is cursed. It's like, who's, who's the guy? Like, if you're an owner, if you have money and you're investing, like, do you want to pay a little bit of attention? To- <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm going to be the one that makes it at this spot. Yeah, yeah right? I don't well. know. So, needless, anyway. short, long story short, we're moving into that building. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got, uh, I shouldn't talk about this on the podcast. I got pulled over by the cops like three nights ago. At what, that building? Um, at La Bear? <laughs> <laughs> the you get pulled over? Club? The shell of La Bear. What, what'd you get pulled over for, Joel? Solicitation? <laughs> well, soli- that's Possession? Right. That's right. Of a cock? I never mind. I'm not talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, great. You, if you're not going to talk about it, we're just going to speculate. It was funny. It was like the second I said La Bears, it was like I was just counting down. Like, <laughs> Yeah. So what did you get pulled over for? Speeding? Yes. <laughs> How fast were you going? I don't know. 
How fast were you going? About six ounces? <laughs> I was... Uh, were, you, were you going uh, 0.10 fast? Yeah. No. <laughs> Joel, Joel drives Some, a jet somewhere too, yes, around sure. there, somewhere around there, and uh, he pulls me over, and uh, I'm not entirely sober, and uh, you know he walk, he's grilling me, walks around in the front of my car, walks back, he goes, "You don't have a front license plate either." I'm like, "Oh, well, great, I'm going to jail, and he's gonna <laughs> get me on the license plate." He goes, "I already have three points." Yeah, you know, for the first time, I got the letter where it's like you get another one. You have to pay a hundred dollars a month. Yo. So uh, I'm like, well, I'm going to jail. And he walks back and he, uh, he lets me go. He lets me go, which was the greatest thing in the world. Uh, you know, it's funny you say that uh, the cop was upset about you not having a front license plate. Texas is kind of weird about license plates. I think also if you have like a license plate cover on your back license plate that covers the word Texas, yeah. that yeah. obstructs it at all, you can get See, pulled over for now that. now that's yeah. ridiculous, Did right? You, yeah, it's absolutely bullshit. It's just like an excuse. Like, they're just looking for excuses to pull people let, over at that ask, point. Let me ask you this, Joel. Did you take a field sobriety test? Astonishing. Had I had had I had I to take a field sobriety test, it would have been over. Like, had he asked me to get out of the car, it would have been over. Yeah. <laughs> I failed a field sobriety test right there in front of LeBear once, and they let me go. I uh, failed What is it about LeBear? I don't know, dude. But I failed it, and the guy's like, man, you're not passing this test. It was the eyeball test, you know? And he goes, have you ever had any kind of head trauma? And I, I told him that I used to be a pro skateboarder, and I'd had six concussions, and he let me go. <laughs> well, I okay, guess, like, well, I see, detailed that, the six. I, that, I made up on the spot. I was like, there was this time I was on a half pipe, and then I told him about how like I'd gotten a concussion on my bicycle and one time at work, see, and I told him I had had six concussions, and the doctor told me if I ever had another concussion, I could die, and I just I invented it all on the spot. Uh, that is extreme value. What you just <laughs> said, no, no, no. What you just said that gives this podcast value. There is a piece of info. I'm going to use it. We earned our there explicit is a piece tag of this information. week. There is a piece yeah. of information that is usable. Saves you hundreds of dollars. <laughs> keeps you from going to jail. Or you could ha- call a cab. Yeah, you know, call a cab. <laughs> call a cab. Let's never, not, let's, ever, let's ever. Let's not game the cab. system. Let's not <laughs> fucking encourage the wrong behavior. That's true. Here. No, and and that's allegedly that I haven't had those concussions. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have had I, a lot of concussions. I've had I've had like I mean the five fact that you got the tattoos going up and down your arm it sells it. It sells it. It's almost yeah. worth getting the tattoos up and down your arm just to have the story work. Those field sobriety tests though, those things are made for you to fail. Jack, I mean, Jack wow. has a story I mean, of Jack all people here. Jack's story takes three hours. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, Jack has a phenomenal story, but it takes forever to tell. So what? we're gonna have to do at some point is edit that have a jack into... podcast yeah. yeah no you don't want a jack podcast no. you can hear all about nfl coaching changes it'd be fucking it, fantastic but any, it, needless to say though the, uh, the 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 pen test the eye test is what i quote unquote failed on that's what they got me on oh, yeah. like walking the line and everything else i was fine but then i spent a night in jail for dwi <laughs> the morning after getting after my sister's wedding and by the way we all don't drink and drive don't drink and drive for the record don't, i've had those concussions i didn't lie for the, don't drink. For and, the record i've never gotten pulled over for a DUI. I, mean, I got i've gotten one two speedy tickets and one ticket for running a red light and for the record i've never drove drove drank when i was in high school one time <laughs> i got a, my first speeding ticket i went to the courthouse to pay it i got a parking ticket while i was p- paying my speeding ticket and then when i left i got a speeding ticket <laughs> oh my god i got i got i was 17 i got pulled over and got two the guy gave me two speeding tickets that doesn't seem legal wow you know the, the first time i ever hit another car when i was driving i was in high school and i was driving my family's like minivan and i was at the police station for some reason and I was leaving the police station, and I backed straight up into another car, and I freaked out and took off. <laughs> you did not. Yep, I, I, it was you. I hit a car in the parking lot of a police station and took off, and was, was it? Fine. A, was I've, it a done, car? I've done that before too. No, it was a, it's like someone else's car. Before I lived in Austin, I was on tour with a band here well, back when I used to roadie, and my friend and I got really drunk, and we decided that we uh, were going to pee on a different building every time we had to pee. <laughs> And uh, marking so the city, I found this really nice glass window, and we peed on it. And then the next morning, we woke up and we were driving around downtown, and we realized that we had peed on the Seventh and Red River, or Seventh and Congress, or Seventh and Thirty Five Police Station. It's <laughs> 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 all over the front window. That's nice. Jeez. Two in the morning. Well, they probably deserved it. <clears throat> That's also alleged. Oh, and the, uh, for the record, I was not drunk when I got arrested. I wasn't either, actually. Me neither. <laughs> I, I, I failed that. No, no. I, well, I, I obviously I didn't fail the test, or I, I would I would have gone to jail. I, sure. I passed the test, and I've had the concussions, and I hadn't been drinking. I was Shoot. sober, and I failed the test. I was sober as well. The one innocent uh, person. Okay, well, I'm, okay. I'm nervous about this podcast. <laughs> hey, um, <laughs> you know what's been awesome the last week, Jeff? What's that, buddy? Mass Effect. Yeah, man. Let's talk about Mass Effect too. I'm, I'm pl- I, you know, I've been I've been playing it. As two characters, I've been having like two games I've been playing at the same time going through that game. And I finished, I just finished it the other day with my Paragon character, and I'm pretty close to finishing it with my Renegade character. 
And I am really digging the hell out of Mass it, Effect 2. It's a tremendous game. I'm actually mad that uh, I looked back and uh, it's gotten like 40 perfect reviews. Wow. And I looked at GameSpot the other day, they gave it a 9. I got really mad about that. What did... They gave Mass Effect 1 an 8.5. 8. Mm. So uh, that game is way more than 0.5 better. Yeah, then Mass Effect. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll go with that. You touched on the th- on Mass Effect One, where sort of the weapon system was a little confusing. In- inventory was the inventory was and like shit. the upgrades, like you could apply to your weapons. Yeah, it and was I, cl- it was cluttered. No, and I played it. and I agree with it. A hundred. I agree with that totally. So know? streamlined. I, I felt also in Mass Effect One, planetary exploration felt tacked on, like landing your your ship on the planet surface and driving around, and that never felt right to me. They removed that too. Thank God. But yeah, dude, that game is great. The only thing I can't do in that game is get laid. <laughs> I have fucked up every turn in that game trying to get laid. So it's it's very familiar territory for you. Yeah, that's why I'm, I'm going to make a comic about it probably. But yeah, it's it's basically like I'm playing high school all over again. <laughs> so did you have to play the first one to understand what's going on in two? No, I didn't play the first one more than... I played like three hours of the first one okay. and I got bored with I don't it. think you even played that much. Yeah. No, I, well, maybe, yeah. I played it twice, too. But I mean, I, I, I'm actually going to go back and play it again because I know that if I invest enough time into it, I'll really dig the first well, one. And I'd like to see the backstory for the one that I'm playing yeah, now. One of my characters that I'm playing through right now, I imported a Mass Effect 1 character and continued it. And the other one I started fresh uh, just so I could see. God, I'm such a nerd. Just so I could see, like, the hooks that they throw in if you've played Mass Effect 1. No, I, I, I do the same thing. Yeah, and there are, there are several characters that you encounter if you import your character. If you import your save game from Mass Effect 1. There are several characters with several new like storyline hooks that aren't available. See, that's in Mass Effect that's 1. what I think makes a game great, and also at the same time drives me crazy because it's like this is great, but it, that's what makes it great. But at the same time, oh, what am I missing? Right. You know. Yeah. So there are there are, you know there are already consequences for things I did in the first game are happening in the second game. So I feel like it's just going to snowball by the time Mass Effect Three comes out. Yeah, I hear you. Was your save game a good character or a bad character? Um, middle of the road. Okay. Kind of leaning towards good. Okay. But well, I did have one problem importing my character. I played Mass Effect 1 twice, actually, with two different characters. And when I went to import my character, the import process only saw one of those characters. Huh. So I couldn't import my other one. That's too bad. I wonder if you had to beat the game to have that import work, because I thought I had a Mass Effect 1 save on my memory card, and it just didn't find it. Hmm. Maybe. I, 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 I bet you probably do. Yeah, you probably yeah. would have beaten it. Anyway, if you, you guys haven't played Mass Effect 2, you both should run out and buy it right now because well, yeah, we've it done, is tremendous. We've done a few Achievement Hunter videos for it, and uh, at first, you know, looking at the achievements before we got it, I didn't think it would be – it would lend itself very well to, to, uh, videos? to Achievement videos. But we've, we've done a couple. I think yeah, it turned get, out pretty well. You guys said, a lot of you, work were, out of it. you were saying, like, oh, there's going to be, like, maybe three or four videos now. Jeff's like, oh, we've got, like, nine more left. Yeah, I think we <laughs> do. Like, wow, okay. Yeah, everything about that game looks great to me, and uh, I desperately want to play it. Yeah, there, there, there are a couple things that bug me about it. It's not – I wouldn't say it's a perfect game. What, mm-hmm. what bothers you about it? The planet scanning. There's just like a, an issue of scale there. Like you, you yeah. roll up on a planet and it looks like a tiny little dot or it can look like this huge gas giant, but when you go like enter scanning mode, it's the same size. Like your reticle And it takes change. just as long to scan no matter. Right. If yeah. you're scanning a tiny planet, it should be much faster than scanning the giant one. I agree. That's the one actually. Yeah, people have complained about that. Yeah. And scanning is just a slow process. And scanning's slow. But, but you know. at least it does something. In Mass Effect 1, you collected these minerals, and I couldn't tell what you there's a game. Before. There's a game that Gus plays on the airplane. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, what was that called? I play Star Control 2. When Star we Control 2. <laughs> to me, Mass Effect 2 is Star Control 2, but, you know, updated. Oh, tell, tell, the story no, about, totally that. tell the story about what happened to us in San Francisco on that game. Oh, uh, it's not that interesting, but we were That's out work, cool, working, at, um, working on a commercial spot in December out in, like, like in the San Francisco Bay Area. And I was, we, we had a little bit of downtime, so I was walking around the office complex to see what other businesses that were you know, you know, around us. And one of the offices near us was the office of the people who developed Star Control 2. Really? Did yeah, you know they were like, I? no, no. I was, Are they I still around? Weird. Yeah, I guess they did um, some Tony Hawk game for the Wii, like, last year. Oh, okay. Tony Hawk, like Downhill Jam. jam. Yeah, 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 they did Downhill Jam. But Star Control 2, like Joel said, is just Mass Effect 2, but made, you know, 20 years ago, 15 years ago. Really? And it's, it deserves the update. It's, I mean, it's... It's great gameplay. You know what else is cool about Mass Effect 2? Hmm. I'm going to talk about it forever. I'm sorry. It's, it's written, written extremely well. Yeah, they did a good and job. And voice acting is tremendous, too. Mm-hmm. Every, like, you do... I'm sure this was the same way in Mass Effect 1, but you do... You have to recruit... Most of the game is recruiting the people to help you do the mission, right? And then after you recruit them, you have to gain their loyalty by doing a side mission for them. And so far, every side mission has been so good that I could see it being a movie. Wow. wow. Like, like, there's enough story there. You go through it pretty quickly, like, in... 
30 minutes, but there's enough story there and enough plot that you could flush it out into it. There'd be a great one with Jacob's side yeah. mission. Yeah, like they all have, you know, you Between jump in and, dad. and resolve it for these crew members, but there's obviously, you know, backstory that's been set up on that planet. And, yeah. You know, there's all these other things that happen, and if you focus just on those individual stories, yeah, that's, that's like a whole game. It is. It's like a whole wow. game. Like, Jax and Jacob's were both so good that I, I mean, I, I still think about them. Jack and Jacob, are we talking about Lost? No. <laughs> we'll do that later. I, I, the only one I wasn't, uh, like, super blown away by was Miranda's. Miranda's. Yeah, that was a little weird. It was, it was, it was, it was okay. Little... It was just like... Well. Is, it, is Nolan North in that game? The guy that is uh, the voice acting for every video game that came out last year? I don't know. He did Uncharted 2. Is he, he your Halo friend? Wars. Why don't you ask him? Are you guys friends? <laughs> yes, we're best friends. You should just call him up. Ask him. I'm looking what, it up. What's the name of the one guy who plays the... He's in... Uh... Keith David. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the other guy. I just had to... It, it, yeah. Totally. What do you what, what do you got there? Uh, no, Nolan North is not okay. in, uh, in Mass Effect. Are you looking at Mass Effect 2 right now? Yeah. There's a lot of people in that game. He was in Dark Void. I mean... Uncharted. Uncharted, uh, whatever else. Hmm. Adam Baldwin was Cal Rieger. Didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, Adam Baldwin and Alan Tudyk's in there, right? There's Michael one. Dorn is in there, right? Yeah, Michael Dorn. That was definitely Michael all Dorn. Over the that. only person that Steve bothered Buscemi, me, I think, is in there. The only person that bothered me is the the pilot, the guy who plays the pilot. What's his name? Seth Who's Green. Seth, Seth Green? Green. Oh, I love Seth Green. He's, He's awesome. Joker, right? Yeah. Yeah. Eh. <laughs> You're not a Seth <laughs> Green fan. Yeah. Not a robot chicken fan. He's yeah. a likable dude. Have you ever heard him on Howard Stern? He's very funny. Yeah. So, Gus, what you doing? <laughs> Trisha, Trisha Helfer is the voice of Edie. She's getting a lot of a lot of voiceover work in video games. Well, who is that? Trisha she, Helfer? She was... Uh, number six in yeah, the fucking... Battlestar Galactica? Galactica? Well, it, oh, okay. Boy, it seems like the people who break through into the voiceover video game, I mean, they just get used and used and used. Yeah, yeah. She, she was uh, Dare in ODST, right? Yeah, she was. Man, she was, she's so hot. She's so <laughs> I hot. I saw her at Dragon Con once a couple of years ago, and it was like... It was, I felt like the cartoon wolf that takes Avery draws, <laughs> with like the eyes coming out and like the tongue rolling out. Yeah, dude, she's uh, she was in Playboy a couple of years ago too. It's uh, it's crazy. Which is you know gross. I don't know why <laughs> yeah, it's it it disgusting, demeaning. So I should I talk about uh, Dante's Inferno since you guys are talking about Mass Effect too? Sure, fuck it. I yeah, so let's um, talk about games for once. Sure, why not? Yeah, it's a video game podcast. So you guys have been playing Mass Effect too, and in the meantime, I've been hiding behind the scenes playing Dante's Inferno for like the last week and a half, and. I will say I am not at all jealous of you playing Mass Effect 2 because I'm having so much fun playing Dante's Inferno. You know, I look over at your screen sometimes when you're playing, and I don't know what I'm looking at. Dude, there's I, like, I don't know what I'm looking at in that game. There's like, there's some crazy shit in that game. Uh, for, please stop me if I'm not allowed to talk about it. But oh, no, like, no, As far as I know, we can talk about it. It's creepy. There's, 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 there's like boobs with tongues coming out of them and <laughs> like babies crawling around trying to kill you. Yeah, and... I mean, it's, it's you know, you're playing through all the rings of hell, so it's like, you know, greed, gluttony, lust, uh, treachery, violence. Like, they're all in there, and it's just... The, the visuals, All the greatest hits. <laughs> yeah. the, visu the visuals in that game are ridiculous, man. And we're for Achievement Hunter, we're doing, uh, to promote, uh, I guess, us <laughs> for the game, we're doing a video a day until it comes out. Yeah, yeah. It started today, right? Yeah, start, so your, your starting, starting today, today. Starting today. Uh, we're doing one video a day until launch, and then I'm sure on launch day, I'm probably going to release, like, like 20 videos. Dude, next week's going to be nuts, because we'll have all that Dante's Inferno stuff, and also Bioshock yeah, comes Bioshock. out next year. Um, I haven't played Dante's Inferno yet. I've just watched you play it. But some of the combat, like that boss battle with the, the nipple tongue boss, <laughs> reminded me of like the Bayonetta combat. Is it similar? To... Uh, well, I mean, there's, if you're talking about quick time effects, there's some, or quick time uh, stuff. There is some of that, like the quick time motions or whatever. But the the fights the fights are pretty awesome because it has an amazing sense of scale. And if that's what you're referring to, yeah. as far as the Bayonetta stuff, yeah. Like, I mean, you'll be fighting these giant creatures, and it, you, you know. And, like, the camera will pull back, and you feel like you're a tiny little guy, and there's this giant-ass creature. And there's, there's a lot of times where they really make that, um, they really point out just how small you are in this giant world. And I, it's really, it's, it's well done how they do it. It's kind of like you in the office. Exactly. <laughs> Wait, well, am I the big one or the small one? You're the, a tiny guy among giants. Oh, okay. I thought, like, you could have gone either way. It could have been a fat joke. Oh, no, I'll do a fat joke. I was, I was, I was, I was waiting to see. You're huge, dude. Okay, there you go. <laughs> you got your own Mass Effect. <laughs> Zing. So, uh, anyway, we'll be putting out uh, Dante's Inferno stuff all this week. So When, when does, that, does that also come out? February? Yeah, it comes out the same day as Bioshock next Tuesday. Don't they have a uh, Super Bowl commercial? They do, as a matter of fact. And actually, CBS uh, made them change the end tagline, because the tagline's been, go to hell, and CBS asked them to change it. 
That's kind of funny. What yeah, they should just show the heck. I think it's uh, hell should, awaits. Should just show the picture. Go, of go to H E double hockey sticks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they could have like Janet Jackson reveal the boob and then a tongue come out. <laughs> yeah. Babies with <laughs> razor arms start coming out of her nipple. I think people, right. people may not fully understand your reference, Joel, until they play the game and get to that point. <laughs> it's a loaded that's, joke. That's really yeah. funny. But I mean, the game's a lot of fun. Um, I, I'm almost done with my second playthrough through it now, and I'm, I'm having a great time with it. It's all, it's it's really neat how it works out and. It's an easy thousand points too, which I'm excited about. Well, I'm really happy. For of you course, guys. I've been playing on a debug unit, so I don't I don't have any of the gamer score that I've received playing the game. I'm gonna have to play it all over again in order to get it on my profile. So <laughs> yeah, that's life is so my, hard. my job is to play video games. <laughs> I gotta play them again. <laughs> I'm so mad. I had to play this game two weeks before it came out. No, my gamer score doesn't count. <laughs> oh, and that and um, it sucks being the luckiest dude ever. <laughs> <laughs> also, I'm so mad. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking idiot. <laughs> That and also my my gamer profile, uh, Bernie wow. Bernie took it for uh, some uh, production stuff, and so I haven't been able to play anything at home. So I've been playing Mag on the PS3. Oh, I, guess, I guess we should explain why Bernie isn't here. Um, I guess he's been working so much that he actually got sick. Yeah, he worked yeah. himself to death. I, I don't know in the seven years Risky's been around that Bernie's ever taken a sick day. No, no, not at all. Maybe once. It's, it's really bizarre to not have him here today. I came in Saturday night to fax something. I was on a date, and I had to, you know, that's what you do on a date, right? You fax stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I fact, like, you're faxing your penis somewhere? 10 p.m. on a Saturday night, and I had to fax some, some paperwork. Uh, and uh, he was just here, plugging away, working. I felt bad. He didn't call me or ask me to come in and help or anything. He was just, like, I guess he was editing. But, yeah, yeah that dude's been on a tear lately. He's a workhorse. Well, hopefully we'll be able to, to talk about and show some of the stuff that he's been working on. We'll see the fruits later, of his Later labor. this month, I think, right? I hope so. Yeah. I'm, so, not, sure, I'm not sure exactly when. So, um, you know, that, that makes me think, shit, later this month, I mean, PAX East is coming up real soon, right? It's the end right. of March, <laughs> March 26th to 28th. Man, like PAX East, away. I had no concept for how big that thing was 60,000 people. Uh, Robert Koo this morning uh, tweeted that he only had 45 three-day badges left. Yeah, yeah 45. The thing is sold the fuck out. I'm not, I'm not surprised. I'm just not surprised at all. I, you know, I don't know. They're expecting bigger attendance at this PAX than there, there was at last year's you know, PAX West. I'm surprised, but at the PAX same West time... PAX West had 68,000, I think. You know, I'm surprised because it's a first-year convention, but at the same time, the Northeast has such a denser population right. yeah. that it's like, oh, you know, it's at Boston, people from New York well, can come in, you, Philadelphia, It's going to be Jersey. interesting, too, because I don't think there's going to be a lot of crossover. You know, I think it's going to be sixty thousand roughly do, do, new people to pack, and, and right? you don't think it'll impact? It'll. It, I don't it think it'll negatively, negatively impact packs. Yeah. yeah. Do you think that there will be a single thing at PAX East that wasn't at PAX West? Yes. Yeah. There's, there's been some new stuff that's been announced in the intermediary. Plus, like a lot of the like people like like Harmonix is going to be there, and a uh -huh. lot of companies that are based on the Northeast. Do you think there's going to be more stuff at PAX East? Than <sighs> I don't know. Well, I mean, like, they, they picked, like, the perfect time of year to have another convention because sort of the, the original PAX is that, what is it, October, September, something like that? Mm -hmm. It's the first week in September. And so it's like, you know, the, the fall push for games. And then now they've got the, the early one, which is, like, the summer games are all coming out. So it's, like, a great time to hit, you know, either side of that. They're going to take over the world, man. Yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. Anyway, kudos to them for being able to pull 60,000 people for their first convention. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be it's gonna be fun. And Gus and I are going to be there. Yeah, right? that's the plan. We will. I'm pretty yeah. sure I'll, I'm, I'll be there, right? No, well, maybe. No, if I'm lucky. We'll see. Yeah, I'm. I'm really looking forward to it. You know, I, look, I like Boston a lot, so it's gonna be cool to get up there. Yeah, I've never been. I've always wanted to go though. All it's right, too, well, it's yeah. too bad it's Let's not during baseball season. I know we miss it by we miss it by like I've, three I've, days. I've driven We're, by like you know the ballpark there. A couple times and just not been able to catch a well, game there. We're, we're talking about seeing the Celtics and the Spurs play, right? Yeah, yeah, the they're going to be, there, be yeah. up there. They're playing that Sunday night, like the after Pax is over. Yeah, we'll just pack pack our shit up in a hurry, <laughs> just like duct tape it all into a ball and ship it out and <laughs> run it. run over to go see a basketball game. If you if you drive by Fenway Park, it looks like a spaceship crashed. <laughs> no, I, and there's and there's like a, a freeway going right by it, right? It's, it's yeah, it looks like it looks terrible. So someone in the comments for the podcast when we talked about PAX East, I, I said Boston Stadium, and someone yelled at me in the comments for not calling it Fenway Park. What was the place in Fallout where the, that town with the nuclear bomb? Megaton? Megaton. Megaton. That's what that stadium looks like. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that stadium looks like. You know, did you all hear about the promotion that MLB 2K10 is running? Yeah, dude. That, that's pretty if, crazy. If oh, I guess yeah. they, they revamped their pitching system in the game, and to show it off... I guess if anyone's able to pitch a perfect game between March 2nd and May 2nd, they get a million dollars. I guess the first person to pitch a perfect game. What yeah. a great it's idea. It's the dollars. best idea of all time. Well, I'm, I'm out of here. Yeah, I know, right? I mean, yeah. how hard can it be? 
<laughs> I pitched a perfect game into the <laughs> in MLB 2K7. I pitched a perfect perfect game until the last out of the ninth inning, and I didn't realize there was an achieve was a hundred point achievement tied to it. And I didn't even know. Yeah, and I blew it. Yes, because I had like they have this this thing uh, they put in like a uh, like a stress meter, and it makes it makes right. your, your strike zone yeah. shake. Uh-huh. And I totally fell for it, and I got nervous. And I had dealt with it many times throughout the course of that you know the other twenty six batters that I'd faced, and I just lost it in okay, the bottom of the ninth. The same thing happened to me. And this is something, like, I play baseball games religiously for a while. I oh, haven't yeah. liked the past three. But I could do, I could pitch a perfect game. Oma, I think I pitch a perfect game on almost every iteration of 2K and EA for, like, a good three or four years. And um, it did get to the point where I feel like in later versions of the game, no matter how perfectly you get to, like, the ninth inning... And I feel like I would be pitching perfectly. I would execute perfectly. And it just didn't matter. Like, someone was just going to hit the ball. It was so, it's so frustrating. I tell you what sucks. That is frustrating. Uh, and that, that, that's the case with a lot of sports games. I, I feel that way with Madden a lot, too. But uh, what sucks is that that seems, like, totally attainable. Like, I feel like I could, if I worked hard enough, do it. Somebody's going to do it in the first 40 minutes if the game comes out. Pro- just, probably, just, right? The first game they play, they're just, they probably play baseball games 24 hours a day. They probably, as soon as the as soon as that promotion came out, they probably started playing yeah, Just start last fucking practicing. Let, let, let's yeah. go over this again. They're going to give away a million, a dollars million dollars to the first person to pitch a perfect. And what, when does it start? March 2nd to May 2nd. Yeah. What are the stipulations? March like, do you have to play, like, the computer on the hardest difficulty, I'm assuming? I don't know. I, I, don't I know. assume so. Let me see it's if I can be. pull that up. They, uh, they do... The, one thing about it, though, is there's an entirely new pitching system this season, yeah. in the, this year's game, so people will have to adjust to that. And that it's supposed to be more realistic, so that'll probably make it more difficult. Um, At least initially. It's only good, only valid for the PS3 and Xbox 360 versions. You Entrants must record the entirety of their game, either with a camera aimed at the TV or monitor, or recorded digitally. It's got to be sent. It must be made on DVD. I guess they're partnering with Twin Galaxies. Oh, Twin well, Galaxies is doing it? Yeah, I guess they partnered with them to, to can make you imagine, it Can you imagine capturing that? You get to the end, you get a drop frame. In a drop frame. <laughs> no, I can't imagine that. That's no, what, it, it says come back soon for more details. I guess yeah. they, they don't have all the details out yet. Because you can play with sliders and stuff in that game. I'm sure they're, they're going to make a very stringent code of rules. I, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised I think it'll any, make you play online and like do some kind of validation. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. any like promotion that involves play our game, do it well, we give you money, it's the greatest promotion ever. No, absolutely. Yeah. It's, this, it's the best promotion I've ever seen. They should do more of that. I agree. No, it's it's good because we talked about the negative press that two, uh, MLB 2K9 had. Remember, we linked those videos a couple of months back. Oh, oh yeah, well, the players and those, were, those were hysterical. They those were, were yeah. they were they're rebounding pretty well. Like you know, they've always kind of like NBA 2K has always kind of lived in the shadow of NBA Live. And I just read this morning uh, that they just announced that they sold two million copies of NBA 2K9, which is a sixty percent increase. From, that's not too shabby. Yeah, wow. from the previous year's game. Didn't you play NBA Live 07 the other day? <laughs> yeah, I did. Did you, did. did you get that achievement? I did. I got. I had two achievements left to get. I got them both. That was the. Uh, they're shutting EA, shutting down the servers for a bunch of older games, and they're shutting down NBA Live 07, which is kind of famous in the achievement world because it has that the stupid achievement to uh, be online with a thousand other players at the same time, and people weren't getting that achievement the day the game came out. You know. Oh. And uh, it doesn't seem like a big deal to get a thousand people online, but I guess it is. Wow. And so. Yeah, since the the servers were shutting down, I think January thirty first. So the last day, a bunch of gamers got together and uh, s- organized this event to try to get a thousand people online, and they did it. They've done it a couple wow. times. Yeah, <laughs> they've done it a couple awesome. times. They failed a couple times, but yeah. So I just like at like noon on Sunday, I just threw the game in and turned my Xbox on, and boop, got the achievement. Congratulations! Awesome. It was awesome. How wow. many gamer score was it? Yeah, hundred points. Wow! wow. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. And I also had another achievement to play. A co-op game, an entire co-op basketball game online against two other human players, and I got that as well. Did you play? Like, did you play with three random people or just two? Random no, people? I played with I played myself with Griffin's account in my lap. So <laughs> you were playing two controllers, I was playing at the two same controllers time? against two random dudes. How bad? And, did, uh, how bad did you win? I, did you, I, I, <laughs> how bad did I win? I lost by nineteen. Oh, that's not too bad. That's not too bad for a twenty-minute basketball game where I had to control two players. Yeah, that's not bad. <laughs> So I felt pretty good about that. I mean, they got confusing after And a I was playing the Dallas Mavericks because it was just like the generic team that popped up. And I don't give a shit about them. It mm. seems kind of weird that it's like all of a sudden it's not possible to get that achievement. Yeah, it's now. impossible now. It's, I it's, mean, that seemed, I'm not sure how I feel about that. What's worse than that is I think somebody can correct me if I'm wrong uh, that's listening to this. But one of the Tiger Woods games, I guess it was the first Tiger Woods game. Sleep with 20 women? Yeah. <laughs> has a... Gl- <laughs> 
Yeah, that's the secret achievement. But the one of the uh, launch achievements was glitched, and it was never patched. And there's an achievement out there that's impossible for anyone to get. Oh, it's, wow. That's, Tiger Woods 06, I think. There have been a couple games like that, though, with glitch achievements. I think most of them have been patched. So I, I'm not I, I, I don't understand how a game passes certification there was one, like that. There was one on, I think, Deadliest Catch actually had a glitch achievement when I was playing that for yeah, uh, Force Enjoyment. Fixed. Did yeah. it really? Yeah, yeah. You can get a thousand points in that list. Catch a lot of people have it. Oh, okay, cool. There's a there's a video game based on the Discovery Channel show. Yeah. yeah. Did they release it like the same day as Halo Two? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Cab- Cabela's Deadliest Catch. <laughs> okay. Uh, obviously, those franchises are making money because they keep making them. Yeah. Okay. All right. We, okay, we, guys. I want to talk about the elephant in the room. Uh, we, I know we've been dancing around for like half an hour now. <laughs> we got to fucking get it out there. Okay. Let's. All right. It. The last season premiere was last night. So this is uh, a yeah, spoiler alert for anyone else who's so, hasn't if, watched if, the if, the show yet. Yeah. If you haven't watched Lost, turn it's, the podcast off. It's been online since it. two a.m. Central Time. Just fucking watch it. <laughs> or Hold, DVR or whatever. All right. So should we begin? Uh, we, we should also mention that Joel ha- doesn't watch Lost. Gus, what did you think? I liked it, and I'm, I'm prepared. I, liked it too. I was. Uh, I mean, it's I, to have it I can't, spoiled. When did it? When did the last season end? Was it May? Yeah, I, I, I was about like, it's right. been such a long fucking wait. That and it, it's a testament to a show that there can be that long of a break, and I can still be interested in it when it comes back. Like I felt like the Sopranos always had long breaks, and I love the Sopranos to death, but the breaks always killed. Well, me. the Sopranos, the breaks killed the Sopranos. The, the, I stopped watching. They did have long. They breaks had year and that. a half yeah. long breaks though. But I mean, it's it's. I, I, I really liked it. I felt. Like, I was nervous watching it last night because, you know, the, the first hour started coming to a close. I didn't realize it was a two-hour show. Yeah, the first and hour the, was a little slow. The first hour was wrapping up, and I was like, oh, no, they're not resolving anything. And then, like, the, the show kept going past. It was like 902, 903. I was like, oh, thank God. It must be a two-hour show. <laughs> yeah, I had the same thing. Like, Frank came over. Our friend Frank came over to watch it with uh, Griffin and I. And at 9, he put he rides a motorcycle. He put on his jacket and started to get all bundled up and put his helmet on. And he, like, stood at the door, and he was, like, trying to watch the last couple seconds before he left. And that was he basically had to stand there for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> We had we had no idea it was gonna be two hours either. Yeah, it was it was interesting seeing, you know, I I didn't know what to expect. I guess after the bomb went off, and it was interesting that now I guess there's like two realities happening at the same time. That's what it seems like. There's, but like there's certain people are like like where's you know how come Juliet isn't or where is Juliet in the in the good reality or how how should we label these now? Well, if, if, Lost if Prime. In, in that reality, she never would have gone to the island to work as the fertility specialist. That's true. So she would still be in Portland or. Was she from Portland? I know she went to Middle East outside of Portland. I thought Portland. she was from Florida. But, she was yeah. in Portland. That's where they recruited her. No, like, she, no she got. She, she was in, she, she she was in Miami. Been, yeah, I she think. was in Miami because the guy got hit by the truck. Middle East is outside of Portland, so that's where she went, and then okay. she got in the sub there. Yeah, because yeah, that, that episode was that, I think it was titled like "This Is in Portland" or "Not in Portland right. Anymore." Or or just just outside Portland. Yeah, yeah. Can I ask you guys a question? Yes. yes. What's up with that fucking temple? <laughs> and like and the fact that there's like there's like four thousand dudes walking. Well, no, around. no, that, 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 the population of that island is now like twenty two thousand people. No, because remember, Richard told okay, get uh, take everyone, get to the temple. Like he mentioned that in like season three or four. There was a was lot four. of people in that temple, including the flight see. attendant, the flight and, yeah, and, the, and the children, the and the children, and the children. Yeah, the, uh, the, you get the that temple's big, and you get the impression that there's a there's a pretty big population there. All I'm know. saying is the population of that island is a lot bigger than we thought. Yeah. Oh, it, I wouldn't be surprised if, like, on the northwest end, nobody knows about it, but there's, like, a sandals resort. <laughs> so, so the land value's going down is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I just... It's not so... That island's not so lost. <laughs> oh, man. Um, the, found. So who else freaked out when they saw the shark with the uh, the tattoo on its fins? <laughs> that, 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 that was an interesting throwback. Yeah, because well, we just watched this video on it's College so Humor talking about, like, the Lost writers, like, if you know how to, how Lost ends, write us, and... Uh, they mentioned the shark with the, the tattoo on his back. Or whatever. I, was <laughs> yeah, like, I saw that and freaked out. I thought it was great. That's funny because at the time that that episode aired, I, I didn't see that. And then someone talked about it and I had to like go back and watch the episode over again on my DVR. It's like, holy shit. Yeah, there's totally a logo right there. When did they blow up the island? In the 70s? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 77? 77. 76. Somewhere around there. Something like yeah. that. Well, that, sh- that was a pretty old shark at that point. What? <laughs> what? That shark would be 30 years old. What's the logo? No, but it's the the, the the Dharma logo is on like uh, the, the tail fin of the no, shark. No, 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 Jeff. The logo on the shark that we saw last night in the season premiere was in the current time because it was from when yeah. the plane was flying over and then the camera panned down. And you see the shark underwater. Yeah, this is the this is the after the island had been sunk right, in the seventies. The, the first the first but, time you saw the shark was also in current time. No, no, but what I'm saying... Yeah, 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 I, okay. get, I get what he's saying. No, 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 Jeff, you're right, because... Um, that shark it, would still have to be yeah, 30 years old. If they annihilated the island, that, that that means everything from that point on. Unless Dharma's still there, God damn it! No, the, the island's underwater! How but, is Dharma uh, at the island? It's Dharma might not be at the island. They might be on a boat. They might still be there. 
I get. You're like, presupposing that the, the island needs Dharma, to be there. Dharma is hanging out in. They had underwater in, stations like, in boats, tattooing they had, sharks. They had underwater stations and like underwater the looking glass. Yeah, which needed the island to survive. It was tethered to the island. It didn't need the island to survive. Sure, it did. No, that's where it's got. It's no. where it got its electricity and shit. That's Wrong. Always, that's always in the tether. You don't need. Yeah, that's true. You don't need to get electricity like that. You can get it from the current and from uh, from tidal shifts. But that's, they, not, they, how, that's, that's, but that's they, not how they got it. I'm they got saying, it from the cable. I, that's how they got it in the other reality. I'm saying in this other reality, they could have come up with a different way to power it. You're looking for it. Yeah, you're, looking you're, for you're stretching. No, all I'm saying, no, you all are not understanding the differences <laughs> between reality. Yes, we are. <laughs> Listen to what you just said. Um, we know that Dharma <laughs> existed like, and like operated in, in, the, in, 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 the original, in the original fucking reality. We know that Dharma was around and operated for a long time, and I could buy that a shark. That shark could only be 15 years old, maybe, yeah, in, yeah. The original, in the original reality. In the new one, we know that that fucking island got sunk in 1977. Right. Therefore, there, were no, there was nobody around to make new fucking... What are they? What, how, how, how old do sharks live? Today? That's what I'm looking at. Sharks okay. live, I sharks bet, live I a bet, I bet they do live at least 30 years. Yeah. I'm, I'm not saying it's well. not possible. I'm just saying that was an older shark. No, I, I disagree. But sharks, tiger sharks can live to be between 30 and 40. The whale shark can live 100 to 150 years. There you yeah. go. How, wow. All right. Where's your explanation of where that shark came from then? I, I think, I don't know. I don't have an explanation. I'm just saying that that's not necessarily the same shark that's super old. My explanation for that shark is before they set off the nuke, they tattooed that shark, put it in the water. And then the losty showed up, blew up the island. And the shark still in the water. Can I ask you a question? Yes. How did the shark survive a nuclear blast? He was underwater. It sank an entire what, island what's wrong around with He was it? underwater. Oh, okay. That's what we should do. You know? Why didn't we think about that? In the Cold War, why didn't we all build water, water barriers around the Everybody, everybody <laughs> just go fucking dive into your swimming pool that's for five why, that's minutes. That's why the barrels are on yeah, the side of the highway. Learn to hold your breath for three minutes and you'll survive the nuclear If you litter. see a mushroom cloud, just dive in your pool. This is why, fucking this is why Aquaman is the most powerful superhero. <laughs> I was on your side for a while, but god damn. Look who you're siding with. All I'm saying is, god. that shark... That shark that <laughs> island sinks from a nuclear blast. Do you, do you think it's that far underwater? That shark's not out swimming it. Do you think the island you ever watch sunk? A helicopter no, try to do you think the island sunk because of the nuclear blast? Yeah, I do. Also, then how come how come other islands have never sunk I, because island, of nuclear blasts? Islands don't sink. That's exactly. A, that's another thing. Islands can't exactly. Sink. That, I don't think the I don't maybe, think the maybe, nuke maybe sank they, that island. Maybe it made a big crater and the water went. No, 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 no because no, all the houses were right, still there. You see the houses in the playground. Yeah. We're focusing too much on one thing. Okay. I guess we are. We're on the, we're on the first five minutes of the well, episode. That, that, that's the sign of a good show, I think. You know, I don't know. There were other little differences, like in the in the, the new Prime reality. Should we call Which one's Prime? The Prime. original or the new one? Uh, Prime it would be the original okay. one. Okay. Let's so call No Crash and Crash. Okay. In the No Crash reality, there were differences on the plane. Like? Like... Oh, like, like Boone, like Shannon wasn't on the plane because she was with... Well, yeah, I mean... She but stayed in that, Australia. That, 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 those are small things. They're like character changes. Like, like her... Jack would... Let me finish. I'm oh, trying to quit interrupting oh, me. I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> like Jack being nervous about the plane and him having to get calmed down. Yeah. I, uh, what's the woman's name? The Rose. Woman that used, Rose. Rose. Like Rose, in the original, Rose was nervous and Jack tells her, don't worry, it's, it's turbulence, it's fine. This time around, Rose is the one telling Jack, don't worry, planes want to be in the air. And then, you know, Jack's, like, gripping his armrest. Yeah, like, you yeah. can let go now. Well, yeah, because the, like, the events that they, when they changed the timeline by blowing up the island, it obviously caused a small ripple throughout the rest of humanity, which made minor changes. Like, Jack's now a flying pussy. Yeah, and also, there were other differences. Like, I, I saw the interview with uh, Damon Lindelof and Carlton Cuse on Jimmy Kimmel last night, and Damon, I think it was Damon Lindelof pointed out that um, on this re new reality, the flight attendant only gives Jack only one bottle of liquor, whereas in the original pilot in the original reality he was given two bottles of liquor Ooh. yeah that's true and there's like like there were a tons of weird little differences like that well hurley i mean the thing that bugged me is hurley said he's the luckiest guy in the world right and so that means hurley won the lottery without using the numbers right or he, or the numbers made him lucky right. no no he didn't know the numbers were from the island so he didn't get those numbers how do you know he didn't get them? Yeah, he, he might still use the same numbers. those numbers could have gotten those numbers didn't exist after 1977 they could have still gotten off the island before it blew up he got the numbers from some. He got the numbers from a, an insane, insane, insane asylum. asylum. Who got yeah. it? He he got it from the dude who got it from the radio station in Australia. Or in the, Australia. the listening station in Australia. Which w which, which got the that, numbers though? from the distress signal that what's her face sent out, right? No, the numbers no, no, weren't no. in the distress signal. No, no, they never really explained where that dude got the numbers from. Huh. The listening station guy. But like, yeah, I, like, I, it's totally fine that he he can he could still potentially receive those numbers. Absolutely, that makes a lot more sense in the show. Well, I'm, you know, I, I'm willing to bet if we do keep on the not crash reality, if we kind of see what happens there, we'll probably figure out what numbers he used. I'm 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 willing to bet that'll happen. I wonder how long they're going to go with these two split realities. 
or if they're ever going to rejoin. How many how many episodes like, are left? 14, I guess. No, like, it'd be 15. That counted and, as two. Did it? Yeah, I, I checked on Wikipedia today, and it, that counted as episodes one and two. Was it I, 16 I, or 17 episodes? 16. Okay. I, I got to read Loftpedia to get caught up. But, uh, like, you know, last season, I thought most of the season would be the people who are off the island trying to get back on, but they very quickly got back on the island. Yeah. You know, it was kind of a, it was kind of a misdirection. So I wonder if they're misdirecting how long there's going to be, all, you know, split realities, if they're going to rejoin. Also, so, also uh, next week's episode is called Kate Does It, which is a reference to an older episode called Kate Did It. Mm. So I wonder if now, Kate, we're going to, it's going to start focusing on, like, what's going on in Kate's life in, her, in the new reality. That's true, because cause she left with, with Claire in the taxi, right? Yeah. And that was how she ended Hmm. So, um, yeah. So, okay. So, who's the key to Lost? Is it Locke or Desmond? I, th- I think it's Desmond. You think so? He seemed. He. I mean, he was the constant for the time traveling, according to Faraday. And also, Jack seemed to recognize him on the plane. Well, they they had met before. Well, right. yeah, I know they, they had met. Well, but that's you know, in the other reality they had, that's presupposing that Desmond still did the race around the world. Right, 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 right. Sure. So, yeah. I mean, it's possible that the, you know that's where he recognizes him from. If that really still happened in the new reality. Yeah, but, but also, if it didn't happen, regardless, Jack still recognized him. But Desmond was only there for that one scene. Like he just showed up, talked to him, they called him brother, and then left. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like well, he probably went back to his seat where his bags and shit were. Mm-hmm. He just didn't want to sit there next to the snoring guy the whole time. Oh, that's right. That's why he left. Okay. Yeah. Way to pay attention, Jack. <laughs> I was so blown away by that shark. I forgot, <laughs> I You're like, is that an old shark? Man. So, so there was this the, this whole duality thing where it's like Locke in like the non crash Locke was definitely the light. He was wearing, like, a lighter color shirt, wearing a white shirt, whereas, like, the evil Locke on the island was wearing a black shirt. So I'm wondering if that has something to do with, well, like, Jacob and the well, man in black. Locke is the man in black. No. Now, now he is. No. Now he is. And, the, again, going back to that interview on Jimmy Kimmel last night, Jimmy Kimmel asked... I think you know, you're cheating. You're using outside sources. I'm, I'm using the source. <laughs> yeah. Damon Lindelof. Creators. Uh, 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 Carlton Cuse and Damon Lindelof. Jimmy Kimmel asked him... Well, Jimmy Kimmel said it kind of obvious that, you know, he said it's kind of obvious that, you know, the man in black who was talking to Jacob is, is, um, is locked now. And they said, no, no, you should, you should, you should watch a little more. Did they say that? Because they did yeah. say Locke is the smoke monster. They said I Locke always is got the, smoke the impression they, they, that the they, man in black was the smoke they monster. Said, they, they, said two thi- they, they, they said two things that kind of fucked me up. I thought that Saeed was Jacob reincarnated now. I don't, they said I didn't a lot of people think that. that. That's a misdirect. They said that's wrong. They also said that... Locke is not the man in black. The man in black is not Locke. They said that? I yeah, gotta go what? watch that thing again. I'll, I'll rewatch it. Maybe then, I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure they said that. But, but, the, but then Albert, they yeah. said Locke is the smoke monster. But Richard Albert looked at him and said, you. Like, he recognized him as, like, oh, you're the bad motherfucker. He's someone else. And I then, don't know. You have to watch that again, because I watched that same interview you're talking about, and I didn't get that out of it at all. Uh, okay. We don't have to watch it right now. In the yeah, I'm, I, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm just going to queue it up so I can watch it after the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I need to watch that. Also, uh, speaking of Richard Alpert, uh, so, what was it? I, I remember you. I don't remember you without chains on. What did he tell him? Yeah, you're, like, you look different you, without chains on. Yeah, uh, he, I think he said you look you look better unchained or something uh, like that. So, so are we assuming now that Alpert was on the the Black Rock, or maybe he just meant that like Alpert was metaphorically chained down by having to work for Jacob, uh, and, uh, and now that he now that Jacob's dead, he can be free. I don't know about that. I, he I, looked I, terrified. Away. I don't know why it would have to be literal. Yeah, I, I think. Well, I don't know. I say, it, it, it's Jack. I mean, he only has a college degree. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> Got to keep it very straightforward. Only has a college degree. <laughs> anyway, it was very interesting. I, and now I, I'm totally sucked in. I, and I, I dreamed about Lost all night. Did you? Yeah, I had like ten dreams about Lost. Like I kept waking up and I'd be like, wow, that was weird. And I'd go back to sleep. And then when I woke up this morning, I had I, I couldn't. I was so confused I had to read Wikipedia because I couldn't remember what was a dream and what really happened so, in so, the show. So now the show has two realities and you have an alternate dream reality for Lost yeah. as well. It's frustrating. <laughs> it's really, it, was, it was really annoying when I woke up this morning. <laughs> That's so awesome. So do you think this will be the last we see of Boone and Charlie? Absolutely not. No. No, I don't think so. No, absolutely not. I think Charlie that, like I like, love seeing Charlie. Like Charlie again. said I was supposed to die. That'll there'll be consequences for him living like in like you know and and then Boone I think they were saying it was going to be a bigger part of the show this year. I, I do have to say uh, one thing that... And we'll see Shannon again. They did say that in the uh, mm-hmm. in that interview oh, with really? Jimmy Kimmel that, that yeah. Shannon's making a comeback. Oh, wow. And the fact that Shannon wasn't on the plane was very deliberate and uh what was the word they used they, they basically alluded to the fact that it was very important it, that they, 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 the they say it had consequences or something, something like, like that significant huh. they said it was, it was significant. significant oh what about jack's dad not being in the in the or the coffin not being there wow i i've lost a lot of luggage before well, I don't know. did they did they find <laughs> no they okay they found the coffin in the original crash, yeah it was right? under, it was uh at the bottom of the lake right that's right yeah okay huh 
Lots of lots of food God, for thought. Yeah, no kidding, man. There's so much there. So I, th- I get the feeling that this podcast is very quickly going to become a Lost podcast because now that they've moved Lost to Tuesday nights and we do our podcast Wednesday morning, because like last season didn't was it Lost on Wednesday nights or Thursday? Yeah, it was Wednesday. Yeah, so it really didn't come into the. I mean, it came into the podcast a little bit, but now it's just like it's going to be what we talk about. Yeah, I, I went the my old place I used to work at. We actually had a meeting on I guess Thursday mornings. We had an hour meeting scheduled. Where like everyone would show up and we just like debrief lost from the night before because everyone knew that they were going to spend all their day talking about it. So like let's just get out of the way now. Can I ask you a question? <laughs> yeah. How's that company doing? <laughs> Company's doing great. <laughs> we should uh, we should rename this the Lost Tank. The Lost yeah. Tank. Oh, speaking of uh, lost, we finally mailed off our trophies. Oh yeah, yeah we mailed. Uh, we, we we FedExed them out the other day. JJ won too. He got Star Trek and Lost. Yeah. So. Yeah. I'm sure uh, he's oh, going to be yeah, put, super excited to open that up. I'm put, sure I, he'll I, be the one to open it up. Hey, those uh, are kick-ass trophies. Yeah, I posted yeah, a picture in the link dump last week. And, uh, they're pretty. They're very uh, patriotic. <laughs> very patriotic. But yeah, we still. Uh, I still need to get the one out to Bioware. And I, if anyone knows how to find the, the drunkest guy ever, that gravity to find drunk guy, you know, let me know. Yeah, please. Yeah, he, 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 I'd, a trophy waiting for him. I'd either send it to him or the convenience store where that happened if yeah. I can find him. Yeah, well, I'm sure, sure that there's bound to be details on that convenience store somewhere. Yeah, like, I've tried looking it up. I can't find it. Like, how, how great would it be to get an acceptance speech from the drunk guy? Dude, being I would drunk. I would fly out and have a beer with that guy <laughs> yeah, and, dude, and give him his trophy. He's probably awesome. dead by now. I'm willing to bet. I hope not. I don't think, dude. If that day didn't kill that guy, <laughs> nothing's going. <through. laughs> that guy survived that convenience store, and then... that was that was a, that was an accomplishment. Yeah. Uh, so, what, so what was the preview for Lost next week? Well, th- was there any real concrete? It, it was it, more like this season. On yeah, Lost. I think it was yeah. this season on okay. Lost. It was kind of a, a montage of stuff, dude. For, that one, the, the one scene with Ben and Locke inside the temple, where Locke was talking about, uh, do you, you know what Locke was? Or when when well, I guess Smoke Monster or Evil Locke was saying, do you know what Locke was thinking when you killed him? Or the last thing he was thinking? Like he didn't understand it or whatever? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'm so understand. confused that, why that, this happened. That whole scene where he was leaning in and out of that shadow, oh, that was so awesome. One, I will say one thing. I, ben is probably, the, in my opinion, the best actor on the show and has had the strongest scenes throughout the show. Mm-hmm. And I don't think I'm going to like a confused, whiny Ben. Like, he plays I, that, like, assured bad guy so well. I think he's going to bring it back together. By I hope he will. Well, I think you he's know, got to, right? I, I named my dog Benjamin. That's after, true. After, <laughs> after Benjamin Linus. How many, how many cast members? On Lost? Yeah. A lot. Like, dude. 15? 15? Like, reco- too like constantly. Like, it's hard to say because yeah, right. they, they, they bring cast members in and then kill them and then bring them back two like, years later. Like Nikki and Paolo? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, no, I, I wonder if we're going to see them again. <laughs> No, so, but like, like, like Boone, you know? That's true. We haven't so, seen Boone in a I want to worry about, about whiny Ben because the fact he came out of the temple after watching what happened and immediately was on the ball talking with Albert or Richard Albert about that. It's like, oh, you go inside, talk to him if you want, you know? He seemed very like calm and collected already after witnessing I what hope happened so. to him. So I don't think we'll have to worry about Ben. I think him and Faraday, or he and Faraday, are the best characters yeah, in the show. I think if I get another dog, I'm going to name my next dog either Daniel, Daniel or Faraday. Faraday. Yeah. <laughs> I, hope, I hope to God we see more Daniel Faraday. Me too. Yeah. I'm afraid we won't, but... So, for people who haven't been keeping up, just a quick question. So basically, it's like different realities. As of today, yeah. yeah. Different realities. And are are characters aware that they're different? No. Well, well, Juliet well, might have yes. been. Yes, yeah, Juliet. Juliet, Juliet might have been. But Juliet, she's dead. Because Juliet, but right before she died, said it worked. And then she died. Like, she well, had, she, did... she said a couple weird lines of, like, something about coffee or something. And then she she leaned in and said it worked. No, she didn't. Oh say, no, 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 yeah, yeah, it worked. That's right, Miles. That's right. Miles. Yeah, yeah. There's Did a character get... who can read dead people's thoughts, Joel. Dude. And <laughs> he read her thoughts after she died, wow. and she she was thinking. It but worked. it totally makes sense because he's the son of the scientist that was in the Darwin. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> I can I be honest with you? I cried a little bit when Juliet and uh, Sawyer kissed. I thought it was so <laughs> it was, sad. It was, it was sad. Dude, it was freaking... that, it was shot really well, and I was all like, "What if she dies? Like she actually is going to die kissing him? I didn't expect her to live a little longer." And I was what, like, what, are, what are your thoughts on Kate? Because I want Kate to die so bad. I'm indifferent towards Kate. I don't yeah. care. Dude, she was your... the best part of season one, and then now she's just become increasingly irrelevant in the show. And me. she just, like, she's ruined Sawyer's life, basically. Like, he had everything going well with Juliet, and then she shows up and is like, oh, crap. And then, she, oh, look, you're on the sub now. Oh, crap. Yeah. Oh, look, you're waiting for me by the hole as I kiss my dead girlfriend. And, oh. And Sawyer blames Jack for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. it's not his fault. Yeah, so I, 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 all of last season, I wanted Kate to die, and even like this season, I was like, maybe she'll. Do- oh no, still. Here. Yeah, I really, I really was unhappy with her for the whole sub thing. Yeah, it, it's pretty ridiculous. Okay. <sighs> okay. 
Good I, show. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't want Lost to, to take over our podcast. You know what's going to be sad? That was like 10 minutes, so that's it was, not too it was, bad. It was 20. Lost that was 20 is, minutes? Lost well, is going to be over. in my over, reality, it was like a half minute. And there's no television show to replace it. Yeah. I've enjoyed having a loss. Like, before Lost, we had Sopranos, you know? Yeah. And we, you well, and I had The Shield. Something There's always been, like, up. one tremendous show. I, I, have, I have a few things I'm holding on to. I'm still holding on to the final season of The Shield, which I haven't watched. I watched the first two episodes. And I'm holding on to V. I don't know... Heard, oh, V's coming back as a full yeah. show. Yeah, I, have, I, I really didn't watch it when it came out in the fall, so I think I'm going to catch up on that, and I'm going to jump into that. V one was back. goofy as shit. Was it? And not in a bad way, but like I watched the first episode of that miniseries, and it was goofy. You know, I, I, I rewatched V. I bought it on the iTunes store and um, and watched it on my iPod not too long ago, and it holds the, up surprisingly well. The Mark well. Singer V? Yeah. The, the Hell old, yeah. It, it, it's not bad. I mean, there's some you know kind of wonky effects because it's like 20 years old now, but... Or 25 years old. Shit. Yeah, it's pretty old. But uh, it, it's not bad. It holds up okay. The original V? Yeah, it came yeah. out in 85, I think. Really? Yeah. You feel that way. It's got Robert England in it. You don't like it, Joel? I thought it was a little goofy, but I, I don't know. I no, that's it, awesome. Dude. I read the novelization like two years ago. <laughs> oh, a, a new <laughs> really? season of uh, Solitary sh- uh, started just now. No. Solitary 4.0. Nobody knows what that is. It's oh, a, I, he, he talks, a, he's talked about it before. It's actually a really cool reality show. It's uh, You can watch the first three seasons on Hulu, like every episode from the first three on Hulu. And it's like every season's only like nine episodes, so you can catch up on it pretty quick. All right. And it's it's really cool. Season four just started on Fox Reality, which is about to shut down. Great. I look forward to seasons <laughs> five and six then. Well, it might get picked up. Like, they're, they're talking about G4 maybe picking up. Fox so. Reality is about to shut down? Yeah, Fox Reality is. a reality anything about to shut down? I don't think I don't think enough cable providers are probably picking it up. Well, you can, yeah. only, you can only show that, what, Fantasy Island so many times. Or what, what, was the, uh, what was that name of the, the reality show? Where Temptation it was like, Island? Temptation Island oh, so many God. times. I, I guess. I don't know. It's like you can show Cops, Temptation Island, and then new episode of, of Solitary. Yeah, like old episodes of The Amazing Race and shit on there. Yeah. Though. I saw Man vs. Beast on there over the Christmas <laughs> holiday. Which one? I don't know. It was the one where a dude, like, was Kobayashi it? decided to out-eat that was a the, bear. That was the first one. That was, one, that was the one where they had the, the midgets versus the elephant pulling yeah, the plane. Yeah, it made me embarrassed to be a human being. <laughs> that show was so insulting. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, that makes me think of those DVDs I bought when I was in Japan. Of like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All the different animals like fighting each other. Panther versus Eagle. <laughs> <laughs> Python versus elephant. <laughs> yeah, it was like such a weird pairing. Did you ever watch them? I watched one of them. It was a, a shark versus a polar bear. I All think. right, wait, 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 I think the, in the water, the shark won, obviously. <laughs> wait a minute. You got videos overseas of animals fighting each other? No, they wouldn't actually have, make the animals fight. Oh. They, 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 they were like talk. They would. I guess they were talking about the animals and who would win, and then they would have like computer simulations, and they have like this really terrible CGI of animals fighting. There was a C- there was a, a show on Discovery about that, like that ex- oh, really? exact idea, right? But with like weapons or whatever. Well, there you go. It was animals. Like they, oh, yeah. they, they, I remember watching one. It was like alligator versus uh, like hippo. They also have. I uh, think that might <laughs> that sounds familiar. Might have been it. They yeah. also have that like Ultimate Warrior show where they pit like yeah, that's yeah, what I'm talking about. Classic warriors against each other. Mm. Goofy. <laughs> Yeah, we should, goofy. We should probably go get some lunch. Dude, I'm going to eat a hamburger. How about yeah, man versus hamburger? <laughs> <laughs> that one? I'm going to go destroy a hamburger. Oh, hey, Super Bowl. We should mention that. It's coming up this weekend. Oh, uh, people care about that? Yeah. <laughs> you, Dante, Dante's Inferno ad. Who's in on. the Super Bowl this year? Saints and Colts. Yeah. All right, well, there you go. Yeah, that's right. There is a Dante's Inferno ad. We, we mentioned that, right? Uh, did we? Yeah, we talked about it earlier. Yeah. We also thought we what did we talk about Tim Tebow and his? Do you want to talk about the, the the coaching changes happening behind the scenes in the NFL in the offseason? Yeah, totally. Let's do it. Let's not. No, let's not. (laughs) All right. Thanks for listening, everyone. Bye. Bye. TTFN.